right, so why does Riggers do coding? Well, it makes the life much easier uh, because you can make a lot of repetitive stuff automatic. Uh, if you look at uh, the panel on the far left side, uh, this entire UI is coded and uh, all the coding behind it will be, uh, let's see which one is it. Yeah, no, that's not the one. I have too much tab open. Uh, this one, this is the one. Uh, I have 600 lines of code to support this entire UI, and it can do can do a lot of things. Uh, but let's just see how this is helpful for maybe this particular part. Now, for example, if I want to do the other side, right? Can grab those, right? And then I can go do the convert thing to a uh, polygon to the curve, okay? CRV, DRV, right, eyebrow. Okay. And then I can just select this and then go to the create joints along curve and I can just give it a name JT, left, uh, right. Eyebrow, okay, and I, I want three joints, and then just create joints. I create joints for me automatically, and it does the grouping, locator, and joint for me, and it's positioned them all correctly and gives them the right uh, u uh, u value. So I don't need to do it every time myself, and it's gonna be a huge. Uh, life saver if you don't have time and it's just boring to do the repetitive stuff because they're there because they're all the same uh, let me rebuild this curve okay and I cannot go over the every detail about this uh, because uh, you know it but it all it does is just repeating the things we did manually by using script um, but there is something I can help you to start with. Uh, let me go create a new Python. And let me show you how to do the grouping part. Uh, so for example, I have a whole lot of joints. Like uh, go rigging, skeleton, and create joints. Holding now X to position 1. There. Oh, actually not there. You know what? Let, let me just duplicate this. Let's just call this one zero one, right? And then let's say I have that much of joints. Okay. So how do I even do that manually? It's just a lot of things and repetitive. And you want to do all you want to do is just the locator and the group on top of the joint. And that's when you want to use coding. Okay. Let me just uh, position them into random places so we can see them all differently. Anyway, so now what you can do is using coding. And uh, the first thing you want to type in is import maya.cmd as, as MC. Uh, I have the auto completion here, which is the uh, command completion. So it shows me what is possible here. But anyway, it's going to be lagging down your system a little bit, which some programmer doesn't like. <laughs> but it's really helpful for beginners. So import maya.cmds uh, as MC. And then you can do, um, uh, yeah, to turn that on, just go to commands and turn the command completion on. And uh, other things, show to tip is also helpful, so you can check those two out. Uh, and then I can put all the selected objects into a list. List is a data type or a, a variable type. And I can ask Maya, which is mc.list selection equals true. What it does is ask Maya to list the selected objects and then put all the selected 
the name of the selected objects into this selection container, which is a list. Okay. And then for atom in selection. Well, what I'm going to do is figure out the name of the locator. I'm just going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to create the locator name will be oh, the locator name will be uh, Adam dot replace and I'm going to replace JT underscore with lock underscore now what does this for mean? So this for means for every atom, every stuff inside of the selection which is the selected object inside of Maya. So for every one of them, I want to get create another variable called locator name and uh, this name will be equals to the name of the atom but replace the joint with locator. If you do print it, and then let's run it. You see it's printing out a bunch of strings and now they're actually starting with lock instead of JT anymore. And you see I also have an indentation if you don't know anything about programming this is the scoping. Uh, if you have an indentation which is created by pressing the tab button on the keyboard you can press shift tab to, to go back. Everything that is indented um, means that it belongs to the for loop. The so for loop will loop and consider them where is one of the step of every loop. Meaning, if I do print whatever and then run this, it's gonna, it's gonna print whatever every time when I loop through one of the element. But if I don't have that indentation and I run it it's going to only print whatever once because it's not belonging to the for anymore so this one will be executed after the entire for loop finished okay that's the scoping of course I don't just want to print name right but let's also uh, figure out the group name the grp name will be Adam dot uh, replace and this time I'm replacing JD with grp uh, if your naming convention is like you don't want the GRP to be in the front but in the back, I see people do that a lot. So you want to rep uh, replace JT with nothing. This is going to delete JT and then you can then add uh, underscore GRP. Okay, so that's the group name. Now let's actually start creating something. You can put in a hash there. That's going to be a comment. Stuff. Okay. A comment will be ignored by the compiler of the program and then uh, so all the purpose here will be um, the notes for the programmer uh, to take. Uh, these notes can be uh, created for yourself or, uh, or for other programmers who will use it uh, to explain what's actually happening in a human language but the, uh, as far as the program concerns this does not exist at all. Uh, let's do something here so mc dot space locator it's gonna create a space locator here and you can name it n equals the locator name you can copy the variable name if that's easier okay and then uh, we can also group that locator so we're gonna group the locator and then the name of the group will be equals to the group name. Now you see a lot of repetition of this pattern. You type in something and you type in a dot and then you type in something that is blue, right? And you have parentheses and you put something inside of the parentheses. So what is this pattern? This is uh, a typical object-oriented uh, ways of doing stuff. What it does, uh, for example, in real world, um, let's say um, let's say I'm a uh, a uh, cooker uh, or a, sh a chef who cooks stuff uh, and you want me to cook something for you so what we will do is uh, cooker which is me and dot the dot means you're asking me to do something and there are multiple things I can do like cook 
okay so this means you are asking cooker with the dot to cook and uh, the process is, is just the detail about what to do what to cook okay in this manner so if you want me to cook pizza it will be if you put in pizza so now I know you want me you want the cooker right here to which is the dot cook something and then something will be the pizza okay so that's what that is so in here we uh, what we do is uh, MC is now representing Maya that's because we import Maya's commands as MC now you're asking Maya to do something and that something will be create a space locator and then some of the detail is that the name of the space locator will be locator name uh, you're asking Maya to do grouping and you're you're telling Maya to group the locator and then you want uh, the group to have this name okay it's that simple and now uh, let's uh, let's move on to after grouping let's match transform transformation we're matching the transformation of the uh, group so grp name which is the name of the group you want to match it to the atom in this case the atom is the join we selected okay and then eventually you parent the joint uh, so atom underneath the uh, locator the locator name okay so all those four things are doing creating locator group the locator match the group to the joint and parent the joint to the group let's see if that's working now let's grab all the joints and then control out uh, sorry control enter to run this code what it does now is actually doing everything for me so now every joint will have a locator on them and then uh, also a group on top of the locator okay so you see why the coding is much much convenient much more convenient than doing that uh, manually every time um, okay uh, so we will go over more coding maybe in the future but for now I just want you to start thinking uh, if uh, you need some coding uh, you can try to do that uh, uh, if you don't know what the command is you can just do the command like uh, create a cube if you don't know what the command is you can see the the command Maya does in script editor which is this command called polycube okay oh I shouldn't do that so that's for the coding part we have went over in class. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'm going to see you next time.